Welcome to the May episode of The Scoop. I'm your host, Tiffany Young. We have a lot to share with you this month, so kick back and enjoy. Captain Monreal frequently talks about the command center of gravity. Over the next two to three years, we could actually have activity here in the southeast that becomes the center of gravity for all of NAVFAC. That is the dry dock recapitalization at submarine base Kings Bay, Georgia. I'm going to pass it on over to the NAVFAC Southeast Area Ops Officer for the South Atlantic AOR, Lieutenant Commander Chris Kasney, to give you the inside scoop. The single ballistic missile submarine dry dock at submarine base Kings Bay, Georgia is of strategic importance to our Navy and our national defense. The dry dock has not seen significant repairs since it was built in the early 1980s and its revitalization is expected to reach a cost of around $500 million. The work is under architecture and engineering design now. The project award is of schedule for April of 2020 with a start work date of June 2020. Although this project will be con completed in the summer of 2023, the project is under a strict one-year time frame to complete the unimpeded work within the dry dock from July 2021 to June 2022 meaning 24-7 operations are likely. Additionally, the work cannot impact submarine fleet deployment schedules, making this extremely important project all the more challenging. As a result, as an enterprise, we must bring the absolute best of everything that NAFAC has to bear. There is simply no room for schedule slips or poor work quality. As a command, we will be standing up a construction management office, or CMO, which will act as the government's construction oversight for the duration of the project. The CMO will be led by a Navy Civil Engineer Corps Commander, along with a Senior Civilian Deputy, GS-14. During 24-7 operations, CMO staff will peak at over 90 military, civilian, and contractor personnel. We intend to only hire the best of the best to oversee the construct of this challenging project. The project encompasses three phases and the CMO staffing requirement will start low and then peak shortly after a 24-7 construction period begins. We have already dedicated command resources to address this critical staffing need. It is important for everyone to have situational awareness of this project as it could have continuous impacts on senior leader engagements for the next four years. I look forward to this monumental test of our organizational's full capability in direct support of the warfighter mission. As we have demonstrated throughout the history of NAFAC, when the nation calls, we answer the bell. NSA Mid-South celebrated Earth Day with the official ribbon cutting of Tennessee's largest solar panel project. The project encompasses Navy and non-Navy land in Millington, Tennessee, and is expected to generate 123 gigawatt hours each year. It's beautiful, right? I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, we're, we're really proud of the partnership really with all the partners, TVA, the city of Millington, um, Silicon Ranch, I mean all of the partners, the Navy has just you know, been a small piece of this and so certainly we're proud to, to be a part of the, the, uh, the project here today. The solar farm occupies over 400 acres with a total of 535,000 solar panels. April is home to many observances and celebrations including Earth Day on April 22nd. The environmental team of PWD Whiting Field found a way to celebrate two observances at once. The team conducted an Earth Day celebration while supporting National Autism Awareness Month at a local elementary school. I have Jeff Kisler and John Stewart on the phone with me today to tell us more about this event and how community engagement mutually benefits the command, the local community, and themselves. Welcome gentlemen and thanks for joining us today. Jeff, can you shed some light on the inspiration behind this event? Yeah, I sure can. So this is the first year the command here has persist, participated in an event like this. The staff down here and, and myself um, always try to come up with um, kind of creative ideas on how to celebrate Earth Day. We also see the environmental staff, um, you know, as part of the command, as an excellent tool for the command itself to do some outreach activities because the environmental business line, the environmental mission supports the overall mission here, but we also have a lot of community involvement type things. And, and frankly, a lot of um, community get involved in, and get very interested in what we do. What kind of activities did you plan for the kids? 
Well, first of all, what we did was instead of trying to do some sort of presentation, uh, we ended up doing three stations. So a lot of hands-on, a lot of illustrations, a lot of pictures. You know, a lot of these kids are, are very tactile-based and, and like to touch stuff. And we had things like, like turtle shells. We had things, you know, what was, what was fantastic about this is the kids caught a, caught a box turtle out in their yard when they were out there, and they brought it to us, so it became part of our display. Why do you both feel community outreach is good for the command? The, the Navy's, you know, primary mission is to support the defense, you know, of our nation. But um, we're a vital part of that community. and We, we want to make sure that, you know, our mission does not mean that we don't integrate with the community, that we don't support the local community, that we're part of them. I think it was a great opportunity for us to um, educate the, the, the school kids and basically promote that we are good stewards of the environment. It also uh, helps the local community understand that, you know, we're regular people, too. <laughs> and we, we're, we have a stake in, in making sure we're good partners. John, can you share why this was important to you personally? Environmental awareness, environmental issues, for me, was, it was instilled in me at a young age that, that, you know, we have one Earth, we have limited resources, and it's important for us for, to protect those resources. And ultimately, that's what led me into my career field as being an environmental scientist. So getting engaged with the kids at a young age and, and hopefully sparking that, that desire to change and be, be good advocates for our environment is, is really important to me. John, I understand you brought some earthworms for the kids to play with. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? When I was able to bring in the earthworms and discuss with the kids how how worms facilitate composting and then pass the worms around, it was about as good as you can expect seeing the, uh, the, the excitement on the kids' faces, being able to handle the worms and that sort of thing. As having coordinated this whole thing, Jeff, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I think sometimes with just a, cr a little bit of creative uh, thinking, you, you, can, you can serve multiple purposes. And, and I think um, we're fortunate enough to, uh, to be able to accomplish that with this event. Well, thank you both so much for sharing such a moving story. If your department does community outreach projects, we'd love to hear about it. Woo! We made it! Thanks for staying tuned in to the May episode of The Scoop. I will now leave you with the photos collected across the Enterprise last month. Until next time, bye!